Hey everybody, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. What's the future of health? I am talking to the who's who of health tech and healthcare innovation. And today I'm here at Vive and I'm checking up with Cedric Kovacs Johnson. He is the founder and CEO of Flume Health and they just raised $30 million in a round that was led by Optum Ventures and also Cigna Ventures. And what's interesting about this is that the business that he's built at Flume is all about creating challenger health plans. So how does that work with the traditional health plans? We're gonna find out, but first, Cedric, it's so great to have you here. Why don't you introduce us to Flume and tell everybody what you do? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks. Uh, really happy to be here. I'm a fan of the show. Thank you. Um, so what we do at Flume is think of us like an OS for health plans. Okay. What that means is we run the entire back end of health plans, and that's everything from payments, claim processing, eligibility management. Think all the stuff that the back end would do. We do it on a single platform. And typically that's done by entities called TPAs, third-party administrators. Um, these are really like manual services businesses. We've added a lot of automation and scalability so we can get plans live very, very quickly, and they run uh, really interesting, unique configurations. Um, and we kind of like to say sometimes we are to health plans what Shopify is to like an e-commerce store, letting them get started quickly. Okay, so talk to me about these different configurations. I want to double click on, on that word in particular, configurations. What does that mean exactly? So like uh, you're creating like a variety of like almost personalized health plans. Yeah, I exactly. So what we're seeing is right now, anybody who's a, a really solid provider says, we want to go out and effectively take risk, not just be a provider that gets paid uh, fee for service, but like maybe capture more of the premium dollar. And also by being a health plan, you control the end-to-end -end member experience. Like how many times have you been to the doctor and you have to get your insurance to approve something first? Imagine if your doctor and your insurance were one and they, they worked in cohesion. So effectively what's happening is the best providers and the best care delivery companies are becoming health plans. And they're going after very niche problems, very niche underserved populations. So we have a group, for example, that just signed up on Flume to build a health plan for aerospace union workers in Wichita, Kansas. It's like okay. super <laughs> niche, right? <laughs> and we're seeing people going after specific diseases, specific locations, specific industries, and it's carving up basically populations into what feels more and more like built for me and mm -hmm. like personalized health coverage. And what you should expect in three to five years when you're signing up for your benefits, it's not just gonna be bronze, silver, gold, it's gonna be how do I wanna receive and use healthcare uh, at the plan level. I love that at the plan level. I mean, that's so interesting to me. And like, how does that work or how, what are you seeing in terms of how that's netting out in terms of like cost savings? Because I would imagine a lot of this is like, let's get these people together and try to figure out how that we how we can contain cost or how we can reduce risk as a plan. So tell me a little bit about, about that side of it. So it's, a, it's actually maybe a two part answer okay, to good. that. So how do you think about cost savings in a plan? Well, first of all, I don't think anyone's mapped it all out. I don't think there's one health plan to save them all. Um, what's interesting is you kind of see uh, effectively these providers that are going after these very niche problems saying I have a thesis of how to how to reduce costs in this area and I'm willing to take risk on it and flume is all about more competition we want these plans to exist and if they succeed it's better for the patient it's because they actually reduce costs if their models don't work you know that's part of the game it's like we want more plans to enter the arena and compete um, but we're seeing really interesting approaches to cost containment how you can weave in different incentive models into the health plan design how you can basically do new risk-based arrangements with providers, build in new point solutions. It's very much a sandbox. There's a lot of experimentation happening, and we're seeing already some best practices emerging of here's what you can do to consistently reduce cost. But because it's this long tail of health plans, um, we are constantly surprised every week. We had, a, we had a company just a few weeks ago, they're a drug discovery like AI platform that wants to build a health insurance company, and like super unexpected. And that's what's exciting for my seat is I see all these unique ideas, and we're saying, Sure, why not? This let's do it. Yeah, yeah let's just do this. Might be better, let's try it out. Okay, how did you convince Optum and Cigna to, <laughs> to come into a business yeah. and, and support you in creating what would ultimately be competitive to them? How did you get them to do that? Yeah, I, I think it's a testament to the fact that these challenger health plans, as we call them, are, are real at this point. They, they are taking out, like, piece by piece, it's sort of the innovator's dilemma. They're taking out different subsets of a population saying, we're better at solving this very narrow problem than a holistic wide solution. So I think in many ways it validates that this movement is happening very quickly. We're on pace to onboard one per month right now, one challenger health wow. plan per month. It's just growing incredibly quickly. Um, and then I think secondly, uh, you know, if you're an at scale payer, you've seen all the tech in the industry. You've interviewed every TPA, you've, you know, all the software. And I think you pretty much come to the conclusion it, it was built for the health plans of 15 years ago. We're really building around 
2022's health plans, which are very complex, a lot of moving parts. All these digital health point solutions are baked in. Um, and so, it, you know, it's, it's a core, I think, testament to the fact that tech in the industry needs an upgrade. Cedric, what happened in the macro environment here that created these conditions for yeah. challenger health plans? Because I feel like pre-pandemic, it was like, can't do anything, can't change the payment model, it won't change, you can't do it. And now all of a sudden it's like challenger health plans all over, challenger PBMs, like uh, companies that are flirting with, with those notions. I mean, there's a lot of them, I can count them off on like my fingers. I mean, so what's going on? Like, what do you think was the macro trend here that's contributed to this? I'm sure you're gonna say like, oh yeah, Flume, Flume has a part in it, but you guys have other you know, comp competitors in the same space. What is the thing that is driven this focus on remaking the way that we pay for care. Yeah, uh, I want to go back to competitors in a sec, because I think yeah, it's an interesting, like, like who, who, are we who are we replacing effectively? Um, what's created this model is I think you've just seen so much investment in digital health holistically. You have the Livongo for X, every rare disease. I think there's a long tail of these companies that are coming up, and they're coming to this conclusion that they can only do so much as a provider, as a PEPM bolt-on provider. They have patients who in many cases love them, right? All these point solutions. Um, but they keep running into the health insurance as like that is the entity I have to go through. So it's really a twofold piece. It's if you're a great at your job, if you're a great care delivery company, you're ready to take risk on, which means you have a lot of upside yep. if you're right, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it aligns incentives in a really great way. So that's the future like great business model for these providers. Um, and secondarily, because you build the whole benefit desi design around how you believe care can best be delivered, you're managing the end-to-end -end member experience. And they're inclined to trust you because you're already their provider. So it's just like an all-around win. We talk, we're so surprised by the number of folks who are ready to do this. Are we, is this just rebranding value-based care? I think this is kind of the elements of value-based care. We've been paying for these point solutions as PEPM. Yeah. They're semi-capitated type arrangements. I think this is really what value-based care looks like. Is okay. uh, we've started using a term called commercial advantage around, and I think it's coming. Commercial advantage. Yeah. All right. I, lo I love the buzz phrases. I do love yeah. them. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about this. Um, le let's talk for a second too. I want to under understand your business model. So sure. how are you guys making money? Like, how, how do you earn your revenue? Yeah. So it's pure uh, software subscription. So okay. per employee per month, as our customers bring on more membership, we grow with them. Uh, which really aligns incentives. Uh, what we found in the industry, we compete with a lot of legacy TPAs, third-party administrators, sure. that have all these non-transparent ways of making revenue. They have like really misaligned how they select their PBM, how they select stop loss, and, and, and these different elements. And we just believe it's it's a modular world, and we're built to be modular. So it's straight PEPM. Um, I think there are there are ways for us in the future to take risk alongside our customers. Uh, but today it's purely a subscription. All right, and this fundraise, $30 million, brings your total up to 40. Yeah. So what are you gonna do with the money? Like what's the, what's the plan in the, <laughs> in, the sh in the near term here? Well, uh, you know, it's basically getting scale. Uh, it's, it's increasing the number of challengers that we, we're gonna bring on this year. Right now, like I mentioned, we're on pace for one per That's month, amazing. which is awesome. And like I said, we could have never predicted how unique the use cases are. We have brokers building plans, we have reinsurance companies building plans, it's all over the board. Um, and But most of the investment is in product and engineering, and uh, we're building a ton of new features that are just going to make those new plan onboarding so much more powerful, cohort-based designs, new workflows. It's going to be awesome. Um, and yeah, I think it's <laughs> that's it. That's <laughs> awesome. Like, like, what else? Do, what else do we need to do? This is great. Yeah. The, cha the the rise of the challenger health plan. I love it. Yeah, and I, one thing to say about challengers, I think uh, we're seeing these startups that are challengers. That you know, Firefly is one of our biggest customers, um, and and they had a thesis and they got to market. We're also seeing incumbents create their own basically challenger models mm -hmm. internally, sort of like what Audi did at Volkswagen. They created their own uh, uh, basically brand. And I think that's also really, really promising for us. So part of this money is to say, we want to start playing with incumbents as well. We think health systems are going to try to do a lot of work on, on taking risk in this way, as well as incumbent payers um, as well. That's exciting. Yeah. Well, we will keep our eye on you. Thank you so much for dropping Thank by. You. It's a pleasure to catch up. I mean, your, your fundraise got a lot of buzz around <laughs> it. And, and I think too, I mean, you have some great, you mentioned Firefly and Jonathan Bush and Faye Rotenberger both also in, the, in your round. So that's really exciting. And it's a pleasure to catch up and understand exactly how it works. Because I think a lot of times we kind of fake it through the tech. So <laughs> thank you for the, the breakdown there. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jessica. All right, it was a pleasure to have you here. I'm Jessica DeMassa. This is the CEO of Flume Health. He uh, just stopped by to talk to me about his fundraise. I am here at and you can check out more interviews with the who's who of health tech over there at my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash WTF Health. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks.